Munchkins and viewers like it's me Munchie. Welcome back to the channel and to another rescue intake story. Thank you for your patience on this channel. I just want to say before we jump into it that I have not been feeling well. Today is one of those days that I'm able to feel a little bit better. Still in a little bit of pain but I am able to present to you finally some rescue intake stories. So thank you for your patience. We have right here what this rescue came in but before I share with you what's inside and what was originally in here. Let's talk about what I do here at Munchie's Place. I run a small animal rescue with my volunteers in Washington State and also a small division in Minnesota for hamsters, gerbils, and mice. We no longer are doing guinea pigs and we are no longer doing cats. But those are two other species that we were commonly fostering. But now we are just down to caged animals that have similar care. And today's story is kind of sad and there is a medical problem with one of them. So without further ado, let's talk about this. This right here was a rescue intake. This is where we go out and find animals that are being rehomed, need to go ASAP, moving, medical, you name it, and we try to help them out. Throughout the years, I have been one of those people that have kind of come down to the neutral <laughs> plateau where I don't get so upset unless it's very intentional neglect. If it's unintentional and they didn't mean to come cause any harm and they were misguided, I really can start to understand this. But the internet out there is still up in arms. So when I make these videos, please understand that I will go over in details what my thoughts are and let you guys know that, hey, this was a surrender intake or, hey, this was a rescue that they didn't intentionally want to be misguided, but due to living in the United States and companies like Petco and PetSmart usually don't provide the best care. Pet store employees, however, some of them know appropriate care, but because of what's on the market right now, unfortunately do not have much of a say if the people that are trying to purchase an animal is going after something that they like and they see. For example, KT Critter Trails, which are a big no in this community. But today's not about hamsters. We're actually talking about some mice, which are one of my favorite to have at the rescue and they are very hard to rehome. However, when it comes to females, they get rehomed very quickly. Males, we tend to have forever, but I enjoy these guys so much. So let's talk about the initial intake and what the post was. This was actually a rehoming group where they were posting in kind of a all around rehoming. There was cats, dogs, bunnies, uh, farm animals. So this is just a mixed group of like, oh, well, I'm just rehoming my animal in here and hope that maybe there's some people out out there that are pet people and this person really 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 wanted them going to a good home so there is no shame here with the way that they're approaching this because they did this appropriately and Thankfully, there was people paying attention like us and we decided to step in. So this person says, rehoming three fancy mice. I have three girls that are needing a loving home. I've had them for about eight months. I got them for my son, but unfortunately he lost interest in them because they are too quick for him to handle, which surprisingly enough, when I have these ladies um, that I will share with you guys here in a bit, they aren't that quick. There's one that does not like to be held, but she is a very curious mouse. And then the other ones are okay to be handled. However, again, we got a medical issue, so I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. I have handled them and they are all really good with touching. Please let me know if you can give them attention they deserve. And in the photos here, you can see that it is in a bin cage, which of course you see right before you. Um, and my initial intake is, oh, saucer wheels. Now mice and the mice community, they tend to like saucer wheels, but I don't like saucer wheels anymore just because they are so lightweight. They can easily be tipped over. Sometimes we get in some pretty big mice that they really can't use. I believe these are 7.5 inch flying saucer wheels and they really can't use that. We start mice off at a minimum of eight inch wheels and we wanna do classic wheels just so that they have a proper stand because again, there's not really any good exercise flying saucer wheels on the market and we don't even use them for hamsters anymore. So they are just a waste. But we are giving them right now because they're in a different setup, 10 inches of wheel beautiful wheel, <laughs> night angel wheel even. But in the photo, you see crumbled litter. And I don't know at that time what type of crumbled litter this is. A lot of crumbled litter out on the market still has baking soda in it. And this is a very strong deterrent for mice in general and wild mice. So having baking soda inside of bedding is only for the human benefit. It is not at all for an animal benefit. And then you see there's hides in there. So there was plenty of places. However, 
for these guys, they did not, with these photos of a top-down view, look like they have enough bedding. And mice are very susceptible, just like rats, to upper respiratory infections. If you are not keeping the room at a consistent temperature, if the temperature dips at all, and if they don't have enough bedding inside to regulate their heat, it becomes a problem. I tell everybody, if you've got the bedding, fill it up. Fill up. Mice benefit from it. Even though they don't burrow very deep down like hamsters do and their activity levels are above surface, they still love to dig, to move stuff, to forage, to grab things and change. And they have burrows and dens and little tunnel systems. But you gotta fill it up. Especially if you got plenty of mice. Three mice is quite a lot. We also have a standing water bottle here. So there's none that are hanging over. But this could also cause them to jump on it and tip it because the base is plastic, unfortunately. And it, like I said, with the flying saucer wheels, isn't very good. So initially, I had one of my volunteers pick up the mice and I want to just relay what she said just because I don't have this because it was just a recent intake too. I don't have this in my notes on the computer for intakes. So I'm just gonna read what she said about them. The original owner says I got them for my son from PetSmart about eight or so months ago. So this means that the mice are nearing a year old for which what I saw, they definitely do look around a year old. They don't look older, but they look on the younger side. He has lost interest in them and I have never had mice before. He named them Pokemon. Pokemon names and right now I still have not named them so by the time you see this video they're probably going to be properly named and above the title. And the impression that my transporter got was that the younger kid was the sole owner and then the mother just felt guilty but we're not sure this is just an assumption because we didn't further discuss with them but she just felt guilty for the animals and wanted to rehome them. But before I discuss about the personalities and medical issues that we saw with at least one of the mice let's talk about more of what you see here because I have it presented for you. We open it up and there's a hanging hay basket right here. Now this actually can be quite fun for mice and they can climb on it, so that's perfectly okay. For hamsters, I would not use something like this. And then on this side, this was supposed to be like maybe a coconut hide, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, half of it is hanging, half of it isn't. And for the ventilation, they have them on the sides. Now, just these two on the sides, I feel like is not enough ventilation. I feel like they should have done something with the lid, especially since they were capable of doing the sides. I don't really like doing sides because that means you cannot fill up that much bedding. Please, oh please do the lid. But looking inside of here, it's, it's not that great. And the inch of bedding, we are going to measure this. How many inches of bedding is inside of here? It looks like there is one and a half to two inches worth of bedding, but it's still not enough. Not enough at all. So this is not appropriate care. So a lot of red flags are just kind of popping up here. The food that they were feeding them, I believe is in the bag over there. So we'll just take a look at that. But there's a bunch of seed and corn mix in here. And you can see that there is some colorful dye. It does kind of remind me of KT Fiesta, maybe not Fiesta but like one of the old KT brands and I don't really like this food definitely go with a rat and mouse lab block Oxbow is a really good source for rat and mice there's also Missouri however that's really high in protein for them so I would recommend if you do have hamsters and mice you can kind of mix in that lab block but try to go for a lesser protein they don't need high amounts of protein so go for Oxbow because they do really well again water bottle it is what looks like an eight ounce water bottle it's not the small ones but this base is way too flimsy and it was just in here but during transport we try to drain the water because it just ruins the whole thing um we got two flying saucer wheels okay here's here's my point again right there i mean why would you want something flimsy like this 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 is all like waste of plastic and i don't like purchasing plastic as much unless it's gonna last because what you're doing is basically just filling up our landfill with this stuff. And including companies that like to make this product like KT and You and Me, which is the Petco brand. Stop it. Find other sources that will last longer and people will use them for longer. And people can reuse them too. Like when they're done with hamster or mouse keeping, let someone else have them. Because usually with this stuff, it just ends up in the trash because it looks trashy once it gets used up. So there is a container and apparently this used to contain Play-Doh. So thankfully there was no Play-Doh in here, but if you ever be clever and use different things that are like day-to-day -day items inside of any sort of hamster or mouse 
mouse enclosure, they must not have residue of anything else on them. So if this was packed with Play-Doh and if you did not rinse it out, guess what? Your hamster or mouse could lick it and if it is toxic to them, it could cause shock to their system or any other toxic thing and it could send them into a sleep-like state and death, more than likely death. There has been times when people have used pill bottles or vitamin bottles and that stuff is coated with stuff that should not be for animals. So please be considerate because I'm sure there's a lot of people that have messed up. I mean, my rule of thumb is I want to buy from companies that I like that make really good products. I understand that people, they don't have a whole lot, but I think if you are going to own a small animal, do it right. Please do it right. There is DIY stuff like popsicle sticks and arts and crafts stuff, which is totally okay. But when it comes to like cardboard that has ink on it, uh, no, stay away from that, especially since not all ink is good for your animals. There is like food dye that's good. Uh, like for instance here, a few people are like, why, why are you promoting colorful chews then? This is food coloring. And you wanna know why it's food coloring and how we know? Because usually companies will state it's food coloring, plus it stains a lot. It's vegan. It's vegan friendly. It stains a lot when water's applied to it. And it's the same as my hair. Food coloring. Yeah. This right here, this is a pretty good hide. This is what they were sleeping in when I first introduced myself to them. There is hay inside of here and I see a bag of oxbow hay. So that's good. There's just not enough bedding in here. And I don't think that they realize that like hay itself, if they don't break it down, it's not really a great standalone. So that's why you add a little bit of hay to mix into a lot of bedding. And then we have a Another, what used to be a hanging hive, but it's no longer a hanging hive, but this is also a good hive. Like all the hides in here are good. They're just not really a whole lot. And there was three mice in here. Now this is too small for hamsters. It's under 450 square inches, just slightly. It's either 420 or maybe 440 or something like that. It's very close, but I don't like using this. This comes from Target. For mice, I want, especially three, to have something bigger. This is kind of like a good starter for maybe one or two mice. I have put like three mice in a 110 quart Sterlite bin cage before. However, this one is just so thin and long. I don't really like it. So I would say not really for three mice, maybe for two. It's not the worst I've ever seen mice being kept in. And mice actually aren't the same as hamsters where they require more space. A lot of scientific studies have been done about mice being content inside of smaller spaces. However, the thing that mice owners need to understand is even if you have them in something smaller than this, you have to fill it up to the brim with enriched this is, I would say, okay. There is some stuff in here. They did provide like hanging toys. They do have climbing toys. Bedding should have definitely been filled up more. They should have added tunnel systems underneath the bedding, things that they can crawl into and make. And then of course wheels needed to be better. Basically they're like kids. They want to climb on the playpen areas to provide them with a lot. So the last item in here is the climbing. Ooh, this is chewed up a lot. So they might not have been providing them with a whole lot of uh, chew toys but mice actually they do use their mouths a lot so you will have to replace items more frequently they're not as bad as gerbils where you have to replace it like every week but for mice they will chew things they will take the bark off of stuff they're just busy little creatures and that's why I love them too but this is chewed to death so this is probably going in my fireplace and it's gonna go burn 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 the ring of fire I think we can move on now to the bags so to get this out of the way this is really good so they did good on this part having some hay in there. This on the other hand, Vitacraft. Now, Vitacraft once upon a time, I swear was baking soda bedding. It says they have an odor control, but they don't say what it is. But on any sort of website, including Amazon, they say non-baking soda bedding. So that means they no longer have baking soda in here. And they're not like Sunseed, where Sunseed is a really big food company, but they also have bedding. And they do have baking soda in it, but it, it kind of looks like this. And that's probably why they say non-baking soda, because they don't want to be lumped in with that. But when I open this and it has purple tints here and there, it smells, I think of lavender because I hate the smell of lavender. My favorite color, purple. But my least favorite smell is a purple flower. Isn't, isn't that weird? Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to smell this one more time. It just smells, I don't like it. 
I would not recommend this bedding and I'm actually not gonna use this bedding because it just smells of something fragranty, which of course probably is natural and is a flower. I'm just not gonna use that. So we got Tropical. That's right, this formula once upon a time and I don't think they have them anymore except for maybe old bags or maybe even the mice because this is the pet mouse and rat and not hamsters. They did have some blue dye coloring inside of here that we really did not like. Let's see, does it say? Yep, it says red 40, blue one, yellow five, and yellow six. This stuff, no. I would not be using for mice, not at all. It says crude protein 14, crude fat seven, crude fiber nine, and then, oh no, oh no, wild harvest are worst worst, worst enemy. So if you've ever seen like the knockoff brand of some of your favorite grocery items, this is basically the knockoff brand and cheap brand of everything when it comes to like small animals. So don't use Wild Harvest. If, if you know someone who is, or if you see someone who's using a product from Wild Harvest, kindly suggest them use other items. I mean, at this point, KT, they are coming out with better stuff and they're coming out with more natural products too. So I would highly start recommending KT, even though KT is a mixed bag of, oh, well, you produce stuff like, say for instance, this, which this is supposed to be a travel carrier, but you'd be surprised by how many people say, oh, that's a good price. That should be a permanent cage, right? Yeah, I worked at a pet store that would sell stuff like this, this small travel carrier, and they're like, oh, we could put an animal inside of that, right? Ha have you, have you literally, do you, do, you, do, 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 do you see what size this is? Like, how do you, what? What, are you kidding me? Like, like, oops, I'm breaking everything already. All right, like, here we go. Shoe, shoe. And then, shoe fit, shoe box, shoe box. It's a shoe box, no. No, don't do this, all right? My shoe can fit comfortably inside of here. It doesn't need to move around, but your animal does. It is an animal. Come on, people, it's an animal. It needs to move other than just in something so small. This should only be travel carrier, and that's what it obviously was used for. So moving on to the last few items, which this is a part of the water bottle holder and another Wild Harvest Bake Shop pretzel treats. No, this has sugar in it and salt for some reason. It has sugar and salt, but do not feed them this because it has wheat flour and dried milk. From my memory, it's only gerbils that are lactose intolerant. So mice, I still don't want to give them milk. This also has blue one, yellow five, yellow six, and red 40 as colors. But yeah, no, 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 sugary treats or stuff that contains milk, I just kind of avoid because you don't usually see that stuff in the wild. Anyways, which is funny because it says wild harvest. Oh, you're harvesting uh, pretzel treats, I see. Ooh, so natural. This, this just entices children. Anyways, that is it. Let's talk about what's going on with the mice. So so there is one beautiful tuxedo looking mouse where she is white and black. There's another one that is white and it's not dove, but it's a brown, like a chocolatey brown color. She is the one that's um, a little bit more scared, but she's curious, but she just doesn't want to be interacted with or touched. But the um, black and white one does. She is actually very curious. She comes to the front entrance of her cage now. The tan one, she is underweight. She has scabs, she is breathing heavily, she is going into the doctors, but we are speculating that it's a possibility she might have an upper respiratory infection. But her and the tuxedo are definitely like two peas in a pod. They are so close together, they bathe each other. Well, right now, only the black and white one's bathing her, but she is not doing well at all. I will keep you updated about our little tan girl. She is hopefully gonna make a recovery. I, I'm very hopeful because she's doing very well. She's eating, she's bonding with her sisters. There's just the fear of like, what if it goes south? There's always a possibility, but I'm very hopeful for her. I'm glad we got her because just having somebody that's not experienced with mice, rehome mice, and one of them ended up up having possibly an upper respiratory infection. I would have felt so bad if someone else got them and they didn't take her in and thought that this was normal. A lot of people don't understand what to look for for these signs. So even though this was someone that could have rehomed them just as easily to another person who loved mice, I'm just glad that I'm one that just brushes all of our animals when it's severe to the vets because we've had so many within the last like 
couple years that just have severe issues. She will hopefully get an update. And if you guys want to, please follow us on Instagram because that's where we post our rescue stories. Not all rescues will be presented on YouTube. There has been several that have come and gone that we have just never talked about, but have talked about on Instagram. So please follow us at Mudgie's Place for Homeless Pets on Instagram. And if you like the channel, subscribe, hit like, show some love on this video, and I'll see you guys around in the next video. Bye!